Good morning, Internet. Good morning, guys. This is CJ back once again with another commented time lapse of my art video. Uh, commented art time lapse video. Uh, today's kind of uh, a little bit different, or this video is kind of a little bit different because instead of doing my typical painting, which I normally do, or my illustration, I am sculpting today. And the best part about this sculpt is that I'm sculpting um, an artwork of a friend of mine that I met through sketch sketchzone.net. Uh, I'm part of this group called the sketchzone.net. Uh, you should totally check us out. Um, and do not get confused with this other group called Sketchzone. There's this other group called Sketchzone. Uh, make sure you check out our group, sketchzone.net. But enough about that. This guy, I actually initially met him through conceptart.org and I re met him in sketchzone.net. Um, he's a very awesome artist. His name is Ajem Strauss. Uh, do check out his Instagram. Link is down below in the description. Um, but yeah, his artwork is very phenomenal and this particular artwork of his that's displayed right now is uh, the artwork that I decided to model. It's called Oranges. Um, so yeah, <laughs> let's start talking about the video that has been playing already. Um, in case you haven't noticed or um, you were listening to me and uh, okay yeah <laughs> let's talk about what happened like the past two minutes uh, essentially I started out with um, a block uh, a cube in blender um, this is the software I'm using right now this is what we're Looking at it's Blender. It's a free open source software. Do you check it out? Um, very, very great software. Um, but yeah, uh, to start out my sculpt, I started with I started out with a cube, um, pretty standard. When people are doing head busts and head skulls, they typically just start out with a cube, and you know they start out subdividing it to get a few resolution in for the mesh, um, and then once once it has a good set of resolution, you know, you set up uh, din topo, uh, a dynamic topology, but it's shortened to din topo. You turn it on, which is one of the settings under the sculpt uh, menu. And what it does is that it automatically adds, adds resolution to what you're sculpting. So instead of having to worry about the resolution of your piece, you don't have to worry about it so much um, because you could just start... Um, sculpting essentially so i turn on the uh, dynamic topology then topo and basically just started shaping the face uh, and you can see that by now uh, three minutes into the video you can already see that i pretty much have the general form and shape of it um so yeah um i would have to say though that the dynamic topology settings I use for this video is kind of off. Uh, I, I'm, I don't experiment with, well, okay, first of all, I don't experiment or I don't do a whole lot of sculpting. I know I should do a whole lot of sculpting. And the reason why I should do more sculpting is because it helps me with my painting skills. Um, like take, for example, faces, you know, being able to sculpt the face, um, helps you draw a face from every different angle because when you're sculpting or digital sculpting in my case you're having a look at it from different angles instead of just like one when you're drawing so you know sculpting i think i do believe is a good practice for most artists because it will help you with you know your artwork if you're typically just a painter and you just want to stay painting that's great it's fine and all but every now and then do experiment with sculpting because um, the stuff that you learn from sculpting, you could translate very well into 2D painting. Now, now that I mentioned that, I wanted to say real quick about um, how I'm sort of doing my <laughs> digital sculpting wrong. Like, uh, 
it, it, okay, I, I don't really think I'm doing it wrong. What, what I'm trying to get at is that the settings that I use, I feel like, was wrong. Typically, when you start out with a sculpt, it's exactly the same as with painting, where you start out loose and then you go refine it some more. Now, if you take a look at the video and you know look at what I've done so far, is so far I started putting the dy dynamic topology settings way too low. And setting the dynamic topology settings way too low adds a lot more resolution than if it was set higher. Um, the normal settings for dynam dynamic topology is anywhere from between 0 to 12. 12 being like, you know, low resolution. And that's what really you're supposed to use when you block things out. Um, around 5 or 3 is when I typically, I notice is, is where I typically work at. And I realize now, looking back at this video, that I really should have started out with a setting of seven in my dynamic topology, around seven or eight, to block things out. Because you can see right here in this part right now that we just looked at, you can see that some parts of the face are, you know, have very low resolution and some are too fine in resolution. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just that, you know, it sets me up to start detailing too early. And when you detail too early, it kind of upsets this balance, you know? It's basically having a good foundation, you know? So in a way, I kind of messed this up, essentially, by starting with a dynamic topology setting of 5 instead of like 7 or 8 to do my blocking. Um, I think 5 is too low. That's pretty much the you know the beginning of the detailing phase so you can see with this ear right now this is a good example of me setting my dynamic topology settings too low I, I think i was working around five or six in that one which is too low like it should have been more like seven eight nine um again as i've mentioned you know when i started doing this it it's too many too much details and really, I should have just been more worried about the blocking phase rather than the detail phase. And see, I kind of caught myself in the trouble here because since I started detailing too early, you know, there's all this stuff that I have to fix with the ear, you know. And so, yeah, I made a mistake. It's essentially what I've been trying to get at for the past five minutes. Um, so this is a good lesson for you guys. When you're doing your painting and when you're doing your sculpting, always start out loose, always start out blocky, then refine, slowly refine. Do not jump into detailing because if you jump into detailing, you will shoot yourself in the foot. Now, I was lucky enough to work my way out of it. You know, so with this particular sculpt, yeah, you know, I could kind of got myself out of a jam sorry i just had to put that in but yeah i got myself out of a jam you know with this particular skull but there are net effects of what happened or of what i did in this case if you look at the face that i sculpted even though if you look at the face it looks you know correct it looks proportional it looks like it could exist it looks right and yeah the face is kind of cute you know sort of the problem with the face is that it does not look like agent draws painting you know like the likeness factor of it was just so off you know i mean at this point in time in my sculpt right now i'm about i want to say two to three hours in my sculpt and at this point in time, I pretty much gave up the likeness factor because I already had a feeling that I failed already. And more than likely, I failed because I started detailing too early instead of doing the blocking phase, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, it could also be that I'm just lack, lacking in practice in sculpt because I don't sculpt as much, you know. So that could also be potentially the problem that I was experiencing when I was making this particular video. But one thing I do know is that my end product, my end 3D, does not look anything close to Agent's draws. I mean, look at it, you know. I mean, my face is kind of, you know, more realistic, while his is more 
cartoony, more Disney. And I really should have gone for the more Disney look instead of like trying to push this realistic look. But again, like I mentioned, you know, I think at this point in time, I, I felt like I was already lost that I might as well just kind of, you know, use Agent Straw's painting more as a guideline, kind of just branch off from it, essentially. And this is pretty much just what I ended up doing, essentially, is to just kind of just go off on my own deal. You know, I mean, I, I try to make it look as similar to his drawing. I really like his drawing. I really wanted to make it look like that, but I know that it was a lost cause. And at this point, I was like, I just want to sculpt. So let me be, let me do it. You know, my way kind of deal, I guess. So yeah, but as a form of my own critique, you know, my own formal critique, in a way, I, even though this sculpt is good practice, you know, I still felt like it was a failure. Just because of the likeness factor and again the thing that i just now noticed when i was watching this uh setting the dynamic topology settings wrong or detailing too early was i think what really messed me up essentially but you know I, at least i have enough experience to work my way out of it you know as i mentioned earlier i was i have enough experience to get myself out of a jam Sorry, I just have to put that in. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, so yes, the sculpt. You know, it's always good practice. It's always, you know, fun to do every now and then. Break up my routine instead of just normally painting. You know, I would, it'd be nice to just do a sculpt every now and then. And this is what this is. So yes. <laughs> Again, when I'm detailing this body right now, I realize I'm probably having the same issue as I did with the face, which is, you know, the dynamic topology settings isn't set correctly because, you know, I'm trying to shape the arm. And I remember thinking when I was working on this, that the arm is way too muscular. It's like, I wanted to get rid of the muscles because, you know, Ajem's, Ajem draws uh, painting does not have muscles or she's not very muscular. And mine is obviously getting way too muscular. But every time I try to get rid of the muscles, it just, you know, it looks like it's just too skinny. And so I remember um, messing around with the arms a lot, you know. And again, like just looking back at it now and looking at this video, I'm beginning to think that part of the reason why was because I have my dynamic topology settings uh, off again, where I, I think it's set to detail too early. See, you see me go back at it again and just kind of just mess around with it, you know. It's like her arms, my references arms are skinny, but then the one I have is muscular, like she's very athletic. So, yeah, uh, I think at some point in time when I was sculpting those arms, I kind of just had the same thought as I did when I was sculpting the face, which is like, I'll just go off on my own thing. And I just now noticed this too, the mouth. Um, the mount is completely off from Agent Draws uh, drawing too. Like on mine, I decided to add dimples. Um, and the thing I decided to add dimples early on because when I was trying to do the eyes, because the eyes was really what, you know, messed me up in the first place. Um, when I was trying to block in the eyes, I should have been blocking in the eyes again like with those low settings of dynamic topology but since i had it high and i started detailing the eyelids too early and the jaws and the nose too early everything got thrown off so that by the time i started sculpting the mount out i was just like you know what i'm just gonna add like dimples on it you know even though agent draws drawing does not have dimples on it because 
yeah I, I think at that point i was just wanting to deviate because i know the likeness attempt was just a lost cause so yeah but yeah it became a motif throughout this whole sculpt i just realized now that i'm watching this again and re-watching this again i feel like that's pretty much just what happened you know it was like a consistent like a consistent feeling of not being able to get the exact likeness and you know instead of just frustrating myself over and over again just trying to get that likeness i just went ahead and just decided to just say hey you know let's just make this as good looking as i can so and in all honesty i don't know if it's good looking for you guys i mean i think she's all right looking you know i think she's a looker but some people might not think she's a looker so i mean i don't know you know she's a sculpt so but yeah now we're getting to the part of the whole phase where i i literally just pretty much just lost it at this point and when i meant by lost it this part was just yeah it took too long <laughs> let me just put it this way the hair took me about two-thirds of the time to sculpt compared to the face and the body and it is it is kind of ironic because if you look at the painting if you look at the drawing the hair only takes about one third of the whole picture or one third of the whole figure so yeah it's ironic that an object that's one third or less than a third of the figure took about two two thirds of my time to sculpt so yeah and i don't know what happened you know honestly i I don't know if the dynamic topology, I guess, had something to do with it or if I just had trouble with hair in general. Um, but I remember just not liking the hair. I, I remember not liking this. And I was so frustrated with it that I was like, you know what, I'm going to retopologize it, which is what I did. And you'll see me do that later on. Um, which is funny because, because in all honesty, I should have just retopologized at this point in time instead of doing all these details. But that's not what happened. Instead, I did the details. Then I retopologized. Or technically, I, I did all these details. And then I rigged it. And then I retopologized. And then I detailed again, which seems like an extra step. But again, like I said, I got lost. I, I didn't really know like how to do it, you know. So yeah, uh, I guess it's lack of practice in a way. But yeah, I think this is the part where I start the rigging process, which, you know, the thing about rigging too is that I'm not very comfortable with it, um, comfortable with it, because I don't do this often enough. I mean, it took me forever to realize what I was doing wrong here. Um, you can see how her jaw is really messed up. What happened was that I was trying to paint the weights for one bone and after I painted it I'm like well why isn't it working and then it took me forever to realize that the other bone the second bone also has an influence on the face and it just I mean it took me forever to remember that because I don't rig enough and so yeah I had issues with the jaw as you can see right here it's all funky it's all messed up and I kept going back and forth i mean this is like the third time i redrew this the bone um and then you see i think finally i caught on with what's going on with this one and i think this is the point i realized oh yeah the second bone has a second bone has an influence too and so that's when like things kind of click but yeah going back to the hair you know instead of detailing it like i just did just now what i should have done was i should have kept it blocked out you know or i should have just kept it like the big blob like it was post the character uh, retopologize and then detail i think that would have saved me about three or four hours but instead i tried doing the whole detailing thing first 
then I realized that yeah, maybe I should have posted this first, which is what's going on now. But yeah. Um so yeah. I mean you win some, you lose some, and in this case I was losing a lot with this with this piece, in all honesty. Uh with this piece of artwork, I felt like I was losing a lot. Um, I felt like I started things out in the wrong end of things. You know, I stepped on with the wrong foot. And it just kind of escalated from there. And so, yeah. Uh, way too many mistakes, I feel like. Um, which I guess is something that I need to refine uh, later on. Or next time I practice, it's probably something that I need to refine a little bit more. But yeah, you can definitely tell that I am definitely more of a 2D artist than a 3D artist. <laughs> so yeah, I have more love for my 2D skills than my 3D skills for sure. But hey, you know, at least I know enough to get myself out of a jam. So yeah. I think this is the point in time when I realized that trying to work with this uh, mesh that I already have was just a lost cause. And so what I decided was to just, you know, smooth everything out so I could have one smooth mesh. And then from this smooth mesh, I did my retopology. And in a way, it was kind of nice that I made the mistake of doing the hair because I don't do retopology enough either. So it was good practice for me, you know, it, to do retopology. So yeah, but that's what I'm doing right now is just smoothing things out because I realized, oh yeah, uh, this detail isn't working. Oh wait, I take it back. It looks like I'm trying to re-detail it again. But I'm almost sure that at some point in time, I realized that this mesh is a lost cause. So yeah. Wow, I don't know why I'm still forcing this mesh. It's just, it does not look good. It looks so horrid. And I'm still trying to work it. Okay, I think at this point I, I give up. I realize that it's just so horrible looking. Uh, yep. Here we go. I'm beginning to do the retopology. And this is probably the first retopology I did where I did not concern myself with uh, getting the perfect quads. Typically, when I do my retopology, I am OCD or obsessive compulsive about making sure they're all quads. I now realize that having an all quads isn't really all that important, especially since I'm just use since especially since my end product is just going to be a statue, uh, a still. It's not going to be animated or anything. So, and since it's not going to be animated, I really shouldn't have concerned myself too much with quads. So yeah, when when I decided on that, it just really freed me up into just, you know, just doing the retopology, sticking with quads and triangles. Um, and that's pretty much what I did uh, throughout this whole process. It sped me up a whole lot because trying to do this whole full all quad approach in retopology, it really takes a lot of time and, and brainstorming. But... 
you know, as you can see right here, the bottom part is all quads. So, you know, this one wasn't such a big deal. But once you start getting to the top part of her head, that's when I start uh, not worrying so much about an all quad approach and just do quads and triangles. And see that that shape, that mesh looks so much better <laughs> when I decided to just retopologize instead of working with that really messed up mesh. So yeah, after the retopology part, um, the detailing that I decided to do in the hair was just really, really simple. Uh, I didn't try to go as much detail as I did earlier with the hair. Um, I, I just really kept it simple. As you can see. Now for the ones who's never done 3D before because they're more of digital painters, uh, I wish I could grow or I wish I could talk at great lengths about Blender and what the steps are and how to do the things that I'm doing right now. Um, because that's the thing with 3D software is that it gets immensely involved and immensely complicated. And it's not quite as easy and as intuitive to pick up compared to say uh, 2D painting or digital painting. Uh, digital sculpting and digital 3D is a very hard discipline to, to learn. And here I am, you know, I've, I've been doing 3D for so long and still there's times where I feel like such a, a noob, you know, I mean, this is a great example where I feel like a noob. Um, so yeah. But, you know, it's always good to, I guess, step out of my comfort zone, do this every now and then, even though this is not really my proficiency in a way. I mean, I, I could do it and and push comes to shove again, like, you know, push comes to shove if I'm asked or required to do this, I can do this. I mean, it's evidenced by this video. I, I know you know what to do and i know how to get myself out of jam if i get myself in a jam so when it comes to like being a 3d generalist then yes i know that i can do the job of a 3d generalist it's just that my preference is to just do painting and so on any given day i will probably be painting more than doing sculpting so yeah but it's something that i'm bringing back slowly you know every now and then um because it breaks my routine up and again you know doing sculpting in 3d helps essentially with my 2d art so yeah but yeah i, I wish i could talk some more about how to use blender properly um for and great blender tutorials though uh, really beginner tutorials there's blender guru by andrew price that's predominantly how i learn blender um so yeah he's really good and for sculpting um channels that i check out uh, regularly there's yan sculpts and Zach zacharias reinhardt i hope i pronounced his name right 
But yeah, those are three great channels for you to work to check out, as well as Agent's Draws. Um, check his Instagram out because he's a good artist. So the topology is almost done. Um, I only have the top part of the head left. Um, so yeah, as soon as I'm finished with this, you could just see me go through the details real fast, real quick. And that's what I mean about um, earlier that I should have done the retopology and the posing. I should have done those first instead of detailing because after I'm done with it, you will see me just go through the details like real fast, real quick. So yeah. Okay, so now I have a good looking shape. I'm digging that shape. So yeah, did some of my minor adjustments, you know, to just kind of preserve things. And then I turned on sub D to uh, get a whole lot of resolution in. So. I have a good base to sculpt with. And then yeah, I'll sculpt the rest of the details real fast, real quick. Okay, so after those few minor adjustments, there's my multi, oh, I use multi-resolution instead of subdivision, that's what. So yeah, I take back the sub D, I did multi-resolution. And uh, Yeah, I'm going to start sculpting in a few seconds after doing all my setup. And I put a photo um, that I found on the internet. Um, I'm not sure what the rights are, so that's the reason why that area is blurred. Just to protect the rights of that particular photo or that uh, protect the rights of the person of in the photo so i did turn on uh, dynamic topology or didn't tell I, I thought i didn't turn it on for a second there you go that's much better uh, i don't know why i was detailing so small it should have been big huge chunks of detail like this one 
this is what I should have been doing initially is just big chunks of detail instead of small details yeah and of course I had a hard time with the ponytail because it's such a small mesh to work with but I feel like I managed you know So yeah, there's the detailing. I'm adding a few more strands of hair after those big huge chunks of detail and yeah, I think this piece is done. So yeah, nice little sculpt, fun little sculpt to do, you know, just to break up my routine of regularly painting. Complicated thing to do too because there's so much setup needed when you're doing 3D. And there it is. It's done. Thank you guys for watching. Good night.